Hello and welcome to Tech24 with me, Rebecca Bowring. On the menu this week, a non-free programme is an injustice. Tech24 speaks to Richard Stallman, the founder of GNU and a staunch advocate of online privacy. He says all software should be free and open source to stop governments and corporations spying on us. And need Wi-Fi anywhere? Slip the world's smallest router into your pocket. The TP-Link Nano is cheap and transportable and fast becoming a tool of choice for hacktivists. A world where software doesn't cost a penny, where all programs are open source, where no one surrenders their personal information to web conglomerates, that's the world of Richard Stallman. He's the founder of the open source GNU operating system and a leading advocate of free software. As society becomes increasingly dependent on computers, Stallman says free software is vital to make sure that we govern our technology and not the reverse. The hacker guru shared his philosophy with Tech24 on a recent visit to Paris. With software, there are just two possibilities. Either the users control the program or the program controls the users. The first case we call free software because in order for the users to control the program, they need certain specific freedoms. And those are the definition of free software. But if the program is not free, then it controls the users and there's always somebody, the owner or developer, who controls the program and through it, has power over the users. This is where the injustice comes from. A non-free program is an injustice. With me in the studio is familiar Tech24 face Mark Edwards. Mark Richard Storman has been banging this drum for decades and many have written him off as being a bit uh, paranoid and fanatical. But do you think now that we're all perma-connected in this age, perhaps his concerns are becoming more relevant? Well, I think uh, he's, got a, he's got a very good point. To be honest, uh, what he does is very laudable in, in many ways. You know, a lot of people don't realise quite how many footprints we leave all over the place when we are as you say, permanently, permanently connected. And what he really fights for is this idea of freedom. And in many ways, I think that's, that's an incredible thing. At the end of the day, if when we go to Carrefour, for instance, to buy d different groceries, we are given the opportunity to buy and we take them home and then we can cook them in whichever way that we want. We, we get, you know, and that's, that's what he's saying is why should you purchase software and then not be able to do what you want with that software as a base, you know, and cook some Chinese food just from certain different products. And, and I think that's absolutely fine. He doesn't have a problem with people making software and then using that to actually make some money from it. It's just what you do afterwards. And the fact that we are all giving away our personal information to a third party. So he's saying turn your back on uh, proprietary software. Have you got any other examples perhaps of where free and open, this free and open source principle is at play in wider society? Well, um, a very, I'm not going to say a very good example, but it, it, there's, there's an example of um, certain universities now al allowing many of their courses to actually be put online and I think that's an incredible thing especially when you know developed countries and and top class universities are allowing other countries and other people who may not have access to these kind of academic resources to be able to add value to themselves to better themselves and to learn and that's really prevalent I think now for countries you know like in Africa or or in in Southeast Asia where they're able to get access to the highest education. Let's go back to Stallman now. His sworn enemy was, of course, Steve Jobs. And he said after the Apple co-founder passed away, I'm not glad he's dead, but I'm glad he's gone. What then are the dangers he sees as inherent in non-free software? Let's take a listen. There are three kinds of malicious features generally. There's features that spy on the user, there are features that are designed to restrict the user, and there are back doors that can receive remote commands to do things to the user. And these, these malicious features, they make a program malware. So let me give you some examples of malware. Programs you've heard of, but you might not know that they're malware. First, Microsoft Windows. It has all three kinds of malicious features. Then there is Mac OS, the operating system in the Macintosh. It has known features to restrict the user. Then there are the iThings, Apple's newer computer products. They have all three. Uh, then there is the Amazon Swindle. They call it the Kindle, but I call it the Swindle because that's what it does. It swindles readers out of their traditional freedoms. 
He also goes on there, Mark, to accuse Amazon of deleting the book 1984, so saying that they're in, enjoying censorship, as it were. And he has this very broad definition of malware. You've got Microsoft and, and Apple both in the firing line with their operating and, system. Yeah, Amazon, they're all, they're all taking hits. But fair play to the guy. He practices what he preaches. I mean, he uses himself a remote Lilong uh, computer uh, because all of, of the software on there is free. He doesn't use a phone. Uh, or, a mobile, a mobile phone, or a mobile or any form because a mobile phone sorry because uh, he he doesn't want to be traced and doesn't want to leave any marks anywhere and he's completely against ideas of uh, uh, the i the iCloud or any cloud, cloud computing, computing yeah, as a whole it. because he's like well that's just rife for having this theft somebody, taken yeah. straight through. So basically, he says, keep your data to yourself. Many thanks for that, Mark Edwards. We'll be focusing on the theme of hacktivism in part two. Stay with us for Test Twenty Four. Our gadget this week is only the size of a pillbox, but it's proof that powerful things can come in small packages. The TP-Link Nano is a router, repeater and a wireless extender. It connects to the internet and then shares the connection around an average size room at 150 megabits per second. Sounds perfect, Mark, for going on the road. Yeah, I mean, this is a it's a, it's a lovely, lovely little device. I mean, it's not new technology per se, it's just it's become so, 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 you know, you can't, I mean, look how small it is. And... Smallest in the world, they say. Smallest in the world, uh, retails at 30 euros. And it, I think that the main thing is, is that you can really, as a hacktivist, you say you don't, you want to hide information, but you want to pass between two networks and very quickly you give the password to one of your uh, activist buddies and uh, they can take all of the information and you, you won't be detected as well. You can take well. it to a public place and nobody would spot it, I suppose. So exactly, because it's got to secure, you, you obviously secure it with a with a WEP key or sorry, with a, pa a password of some sort and uh, and you can take this on. The great thing is it's got its own little battery in there, but it can be charged as well and it has a direct uh, USB link mm, so you can yeah. just take straight through into a USB key to your computer. As you say, it's 30 euros, so it's not very expensive. It comes from a Chinese company, TP-Link. There has been some criticism that the documentation is in poor English. Yes, but um, ultimately that's uh, that, that's something that hopefully will become better in in time. But by having it made in China, it does mean it's, we can get it at the price that it's, uh, that it's actually at, only at 30 euros. And most people who are out to buy something like this kind of know what they're doing in terms of what how to set into. one up in, uh, in any case. So. Exactly. Thanks very much for that review, Mark Edwards. Thanks to you for watching Tech24 this week. Do get in touch with us via the social network, the URL coming up in the corner of your screen right now. And of course, you can follow us on Twitter, the handle there, at TechF24. This week, we're leaving you with the anthem of the free, free software, that is, a la Richard Stallman. Yes, the activist has even taken to singing to get his message across. And he's been given an electro remix by singer-songwriter Asian Glow. Join us now, we share the software.